includes a way out for the White House. Reaction is coming in from all sides in response to what President Obama is calling a, quote, common sense solution to the raging battle over contraception that put the president at odds with the Catholic Church and some within his own party. The president is changing course now, saying religiously affiliated institutions who object to providing birth control coverage will not be required to provide or pay for it. Rather, the insurance companies will pay for it directly. The president also acknowledged how the issue turned into, quote, political football. I understand some folks in Washington may want to treat this as another political wedge issue. But it shouldn't be. Religious liberty will be protected, and a law that requires free preventive care will not discriminate against women. And joining me live with more from the White House, NBC's Kristen Welker. So, Kristen, the president saying this should not have been presented as a wedge issue. However, you have some, again, I point out even supporters of the president who say this never should have gotten to this point. We started the week with David Axelrod saying that there could possibly be a compromise. We had Anita Dunn, another advisor, on this show that same day, and she said she knew nothing of a possible compromise coming from the White House. Here we are on Friday at this point. Absolutely. The administration has kept this really close to the vest. I think they wanted to make sure they had their ducks in a row before uh, the president came out and announced what uh, they are calling an accommodation. They don't like the word compromise, but a lot of people are looking at this and saying that it is, in fact, uh, a compromise to some extent. So what exactly does this do? Well, what President Obama announced today uh, would basically mean that religious-affiliated institutions that had a problem with covering contraception for women would be able to opt out uh, and in turn, insurance companies would be able to reach out to women directly and offer them contraception coverage. So what's the impetus for insurance companies? That's what a lot of people were asking. Uh, well, according to the administration, the impetus is that it will keep costs low because it will essentially prevent some of the health problems uh, that could come about if contraception isn't used. Uh, as you have pointed out, Tamron, this has really been a lightning rod this entire week. The president himself announcing at the top of his remarks uh, that they had wanted to sort of allot a year uh, for discussion about this, but that a year is essentially too long. Uh, this basically just became too heated, the voices uh, on all sides. So uh, the president today making this announcement, by the way, he also spoke about the fact that he did consult uh, with folks within the religious community uh, as well as advocates of this contraception mandate before making this announcement. Right. We're waiting to hear from the bishops on this. We haven't gotten their reaction yet. I have spoken uh, to advocates who say they like uh, what the president had to say today. Tamron. All right. Thank you very much, Kristen. Greatly appreciate it. Let's bring in our News Nation political panel. Gloria Felt is a former president of Planned Parenthood and Melinda Hindenburger is a political writer for the Washington Post and blogger for She the People. Thank you, ladies, for joining us. Gloria, I'll start off with you. Planned Parenthood has uh, issued a statement saying, we believe the compliance mechanism does not compromise a woman's ability to access these critical birth control benefits. They go on to say, however, we will be vigilant in holding the administration and the institutions accountable for rigorous, fair, and consistent implementation of the policy. A mouthful. Bottom line is they're going with the president on what he says here. Cautious optimism, mm -hmm. it appears. Yes. I, I think the, the political calculation of the president was probably one of the smartest ones that he's made. He ripped the Band-Aid off all at once instead of letting it go on and on and on and on toward a, a year's uh, opportunity for the institutions to think, you know, for them to try to work it out. I think that was a very smart thing to do. Uh, but I will say that the issue still seems to be framed incorrectly, in my view, as religion, as in morality, versus perhaps an implication of wanton women who need health care. Frankly, I think this is an issue of women's moral concerns. And, 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 moral, and the birth control is really the moral property of women. It, it, this is really a bigger issue. And but doesn't gonna, it, though, boil down to women's health issues and, and moral concerns should perhaps be left to the individual or if the church here, but it is a health issue. Yes, if you don't have access to the health care, you can't make your own moral decisions, and I think that's one of the most important elements of this, but I, I just would like to see the framing be a little bit more about women's moral autonomy. I mean, myself, as a religious person, my religion says I should be responsible about planning and spacing my childbearing. So for me, birth control is a positive moral thing, and I just don't like to see it framed as though it's 
it's something less. All right, let me bring in Melinda here. Uh, Melinda, already the uh, Catholic Health Association has issued a statement saying they are pleased and grateful the religious liberty and conscious protection needs of so many ministries they serve in the country have been thought out here. Also, Catholic Charities USA is welcoming the administration's attempt to meet the concerns of the religious community. So at least these two Catholic organizations, big voices, have come out uh, optimistic right. about this move from the president. What do you say? I say I, I, it's a big win uh, for all sides. I want to go back to one thing Gloria said. I agreed with much of what she said, but I really did not hear anybody dragging wanton women into it. Um, that, that wouldn't be a right way to frame it, but I did not honestly hear people framing it that way. I think that it was a constitutional issue and those concerns have been dealt with and I'm very glad that the president did. Yes, what he should have maybe done in the beginning, but what a wonderful thing that religious liberty has been guaranteed, contraception and access has been guaranteed for women, which is also very important. And not to get lost in this thing, you know, I am one who really believes that both sides of this contentious abortion issue we've been for fighting over for more than 30 years really do agree in that they want to reduce the rate. So this is also a wonderful victory for reducing the rate of abortions in this country. Melody, I want to play a little bit of what the president said regarding the outcome rage because you bring up the point of religious freedoms. There were, uh, you know, GOP candidates and, and some on the right who were saying that this was an attack on the Catholic Church. The president is, you know, attacking religion. Here's it what was being hang seen on, this way, hang on. this Let me takes play this. that away. You're going to have to stop. Right. Let me play this, please. Thank you. From the very beginning of this process, I spoke directly to various Catholic officials, and I promised that before finalizing the rule as it applied to them, we would spend the next year working with institutions like Catholic hospitals and Catholic universities to find an equitable solution. All right, Melinda, go ahead. There just wasn't that trust to take a year doing this. Mm -hmm. I think in theory it would have been okay to take a year, but in, in practical terms it would have been a disaster because there was no trust on the other side that that was anything other than a ruse to get past the election and then do nothing. But so even this with was the, much if, smarter. If, if, but, Melinda, with this action taken uh, by the president today to establish or reestablish if there was a trust concern with some, you've got Roy Blunt, a Republican, who saying just because you come up with an accounting gimmick and pretend like religious institutions do not have to pay for the mandate does not mean that you satisfy the fundamental constitutional freedoms that all Americans are guaranteed. So uh, still not well, letting it go. Let me let Gloria in on this, Melinda. Well, please. Sure. I think it's going to be absolutely, <clears throat> excuse me, absolutely wonderful if this ends up being a big election issue. I mean, if, if the Republicans keep on talking about it that way, they're going to be very sorry because the 99 percent, those of us who are women who have used birth control. Uh, it, 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 we expect to be able to have access to it. Women are people. Women have constitutional rights. Women should have the moral autonomy to make these decisions. And it, that is such a widespread belief that I think it will be very foolhardy for those on the Republican side to take that tack. Melinda, let me get you in on this. Senator Blunt, as I pointed out, still not satisfied calling this uh, accounting gimmicks. Uh, I, I'm not sure why he refers to it as that. When you yourself pointed out this is a win-win, the church is not beheld to do something it, that it feels is morally against uh, the religion. And women who work for these institutions still have access to this health uh, coverage that they need. Well, I would have been shocked if Roy Blunt would have said this is a great uh, outcome. And, of course, there will be some. Uh, certainly the Republicans will not say that this... Uh furthers anybody's interest or is it at all a positive. And maybe the bishops won't. But mm -hmm. the important thing is that people who were the Catholic allies of the president can, can feel that they were listened to. That's the political side of it. But the principled side of it is that religious liberty is extremely important and people can rightly feel that that really was attended to and changes were made that needed to be made that satisfied all parties.
And, and Gloria, for your part, again, uh, I pointed out Planned Parenthood says that it wants to make sure that compliance is there and they'll be watching. It seems as though the president came out with these words, but as uh, um, Melinda also said, people are on edge, especially when it comes to this administration, this president, and when you have uh, folks throwing out these talking points related to uh, him attacking someone's religion. Well, I, I, he's far from attacked anyone's religion. I think he's gone overboard to try to be fair and to try to accommodate the, the religious beliefs, which is absolutely appropriate. We all want our religious beliefs to be respected. Of course. Mine, too. What women are going to have to be careful of is to make sure that the insurance plans do what they're supposed right. to do. I think we haven't heard the last from the insurance companies as yet. Gloria, thank you. Melinda, thank you as well. It's a great Thanks. pleasure having both of your voices in this. Thank you.